Welcome to the All Things Fun Vidcast, as Allison feverishly prepares. Uh, I'm your host, Ed Evans. I'm here with my co-host, Allison Eckel. Uh, Glenn Walker is still away. He'll be back next week. And we'll probably make fun of him more this week than we did last week, but we could. Oh, I think we were pretty nice last week. Uh, then, then bring it. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about new comics that released today, Wednesday, August 23rd, 2011. We've got lots of stuff here. Oh, my goodness. Lots of stuff. So why don't we jump in here? It's huge. It's uh, just about end of the era ness today, right? Yes, a lot of things are ending. So I have my I have my retired superhero shirt <laughs> in honor of, <laughs> of certain stories that are ending. That's right. We have lots of last ofs this week. So just in case you're, you don't know what we're talking about, right? Sorry. That's okay. DC Comics, DC Comics. Uh, is wrapping up um, almost their entire publishing community, except for Vertigo and the kid stuff. So, um, t so that they can have uh, 52 new number one issues, starting uh, starting at the end of end of the month, August 31st, mm -hmm. uh, with Justice League number one and Flashpoint number five. Uh, if you are following this, you are interested. Uh, head down to All Things Fun. We have a midnight release for Flashpoint five and Justice League uh, number one. Cool party variants, big DC sale. Did I get all that right? Yes. Good. Excellent. And uh, check with the boss. Yes, I kind of check with the boss. So it should be a fun day. There's going to be a lot of new stuff going on. That said, they're wrapping up all the stuff in the current continuity. So what do you have there? Okay, well, should I start with Flashpoint or should I start with all the endings? Completely up to you. Yeah, Flashpoint. We do have some endings in Flashpoint. Anyway, the big overarching event thing that's going on. We have our four Flashpoints for the week. They seem to be consistent with that. They're all three of threes. We have uh, Lois Lane and Resistance. I think this is Britannia yep. on the cover. And uh, Kid Flash Lost, Project Superman, and Hal Jordan. Sorry, Hal. Hal Jordan. Okay. Um, I, was, I had so much to look through this morning. I didn't actually read these stories, but I just trusted they were going to all tie up, sort of, to the point where you're like, oh no, what's next? And then it'll say, continued in Flashpoint number five, because that's the way all the other yep. three of threes in this line have gone. It did flip through Project Superman pretty quickly, and we do get, um, as a, the cover actually is in the book <laughs> this nice. time, and you have uh, Cal and the other um, result of the Project Superman experimentations do face off in a new Themyscira um, with Lois there, and they were having a whole big beat down. So he's not just a running away science experiment anymore. Cal does come back to, um, to be Superman a little. He has been pretty beaten through his life, so he's trying. That's very interesting there. And I'm looking, definitely looking forward to Flashpoint 5 to see how all of these things are pulled together. That's right, so next week, my goodness. Next week. Okay, uh, all right, so the rest of the end of DC. We have uh, Wonder Woman 614, the official end of the Odyssey storyline. And she is renewed as Wonder Woman and gets to face down whoever has been doing this to her throughout the entire Odyssey story arc. Very good, very good. Uh, Batman Incorporated by Grant Morrison. This is number eight. Um, I'll show it to me my notes. I wrote down, it's a very funny, the, the write-up on the DC Comics website about what this is about has some big, big words, but you basically get like zombie something, post-apocalyptic something, but it's all inside the computer or something like that. The Batman Incorporated stories have been looking at uh, Batman and, and his reach in different areas of the world, and as he sets up different parts of his team across the world. I'm not sure how this figures in, but Oracle's in this one. So those of you who uh, are looking are not looking forward to Oracle not being in the new 52, she's in here. Okay, uh, Green Arrow, this is the second of a two-part story ending the whole Green Arrow run. This is not J.T. Crow, but it's um, James Patrick telling a two-part story where uh, Green Arrow has his arrows up against mecha suits. See that one. End of the Justice Society of America. Take a moment. <laughs> oh. Oh. I didn't get a chance to flip through this yet, but I certainly will. Um, this is uh, a nice ode to kind of cover. Yeah, very sharp Darwin Cook cover. That's very nice. Teen Titans number 100. We have two Teen Titans this month so they could fit this in because it was planned and it, they wanted it to go all the way to 100. And it didn't. So 
said, this will be a nice wrap-up to the team. Uh, Action Comics, Reign of the Doomsdays, comes to a, a big end as we find out what all do the Doom Slayer has been about, and we have another big beatdown between Superman and a Doomsday-like creature. So that whole big run from Paul Cornell comes to an end. And this will be your last number for Action Comics from the number one that we had all the way back to number 904 before we go back to number one. Get it. Get it. Get it while it's hot. Uh, let's see. Gates of Gotham. Batman Gates of Gotham 5 of 5. This is fantastic. This has been an amazing story that you guys should all be reading because it's just awesome. You have some of the, the history of Gotham in the 1800s and how it all was built interlaced very well with a modern tale of the current Bat family, minus Oracle and Bruce himself, and how they all interrelate, given their personalities and how they work together as a team, or don't, or sometimes do, uh, to get this mystery solved. And it's been really, really good. Over there, yes. let's talk about uh, Batman Arkham City 5 of 5, that limited series comes to an end. This links the uh, first Batman Arkham uh, video game with the forthcoming Batman. Arkham video games. So that's very cool. Gives you a little story in between the two video games. Cool. Uh, also in the Batcave, while we are there, we have the last Gotham City Sirens, and we have Batman: The Dark Knight number five. Oh, I've been reading that one. Yes, you know, it's very cool. Yeah. So, is this is this outside of canon, or is this? It's um, it's a little outside of canon. While this is all happening, this is also happening, or this yes. is. Yeah, because this is a depowered uh, demon, and this new character, Dawn, that Batman rescued a few episodes ago, or a few comics ago. So, uh, and I believe this is this is also coming to a conclusion for the new Dark Knight that starts. Okay, good. All uh, right, should I? Yeah. This? this is not an ending. This is a beginning. It's true. Go for it. Okay, a uh, Superman Beyond Zero. This is awesome. This was so much fun. This is just a great, great Superman story. It's in the Batman Beyond timeline, so he's older, and uh, he's not quite as strong as he used to be. So he's not, he's not the god. You know, he's not, I flick my fingers and something happens. He, he's, um, he comes back to Earth and helps out the Justice League in a very Superman way. He doesn't just beat down the bad guy, but actually finds a way to solve it. It's a very nice story. Okay. What do you have? Do you have something well, to finish this up with? Yeah, I do. We'll just we'll talk about the other big event, and then we'll come back and talk about all the other all stuff. The other things. Uh, so, Fear Itself, um, there's so much Fear Itself. The last couple weeks, it's nice to only have two things this week. So you've got New Mutants, number uh, issue 30, Fear Itself, tie-in. And you've got uh, Fear Itself, Youth and Revolt, 4-6. This has actually been a pretty good miniseries uh, involving... Um, the 50 State Initiative characters, the kind of secondary characters that Marvel brought out um, uh, with uh, Osborn and his uh, Hammer group. So these are a bunch of young heroes um, trying to do the right thing during Fear Itself, which has been a fun read as well. So not too shabby. And then, uh, Taylor, let's, let's tell them about that before we go, and then we'll wrap up. <laughs> I saw this in the pilot, and I said, really? <laughs> Green Lantern movie tie-in book featuring Sinestro. <laughs> so now, the Green Lantern tie-in books are actually pretty cool because they gave you um, something neat, some neat background about the movie versions of some of the characters. So they were all original cool. stories. All original stories, and they were cool because they came out before the movie. Now this one, um, I believe, does that as well. <laughs> but for Sinestro, I know that it had to come out after the fact because they didn't want to give out uh, too much information about Sinestro because this, uh, this also gives you some information about the, uh, the Guardians as well and uh, why in the movie universe he might be wearing the yellow ring. So in any event, it's a, it is a bigger book than just Sinestro, and he was the scene stealer in the whole movie, perhaps even better than Ryan Reynolds, who played uh, Al Jordan. Better than Ryan Reynolds' abs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I, you can tell me that. Uh, so. I actually haven't seen the movie, so... <laughs> but yeah, that was worth this. We're going to check that out, but this is... Uh, this, this, it's dated correctly, so I don't think it was delayed. I think they wanted this to be out after the fact so that it wouldn't wreck the movie. Maybe did it have to be after... Um, after he becomes a Green Lantern again? Or does that not have anything to do with it? Well, that, that might tie in as well, because uh, for those who you know, remember the, the new Green Lantern book, is not about Hal, it's about Sinestro. Green Lantern number one will be about Sinestro, it's not a secret anymore. So, so there you go. So tell you what, we still have a ton of stuff to talk about, so don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the All Things Fun vidcast right after this.